It's 10 o'clock in the morning. My friend Seamus Coughlin from Freedom Tunes is here. He doesn't have a lot of time. Everybody's busy. So I said, I, I need Seamus to be able to play the game here at Daily Wire Studios. We're not changing the rules. He's going to have a big pint of Guinness. I'm going to have my standard martini. Yeah, I hadn't anticipated throwing back at 10 in the morning. You know the, the benefit of that, though? is it gets the shakes to go away. Yeah, exactly. It's a nice way to open yeah. the eyes up. I, honestly, I was, I was trying to um, hide my embarrassment here. This is any other Wednesday for me, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad that I can enter into your yeah, Exactly. World. I'm like, I'm going to bring him to my turf, and I'm going to beat him there. Now, you're familiar with the rules of the game. Yes. So this very simple, we're going to read the prompt, we'll go back and forth, and you have to answer how you think the other person yes. would answer. would answer. Okay. Should we get started? Yeah, absolutely. Should we have a little toast just to yeah, yeah. kick it off at, uh, you know, pour some out for the five o'clock somewhere? Can I pour some out for the people who can't you be You pour here? right out, yeah, just, just right bit, on, just especially since the PA. Uh, the PA yeah, I'll be good at the PA. I know, that's fine. Yeah, no, I don't want to make the PA's life more difficult. I was actually going to pour it out for them. I was hoping they could, <laughs> so they could lap it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's their pay. Mm -hmm. Soccer sucks. I'm assuming you have taste. So I'm going to give the kind of standard answer. Mm -hmm. The only reason that I even hesitated mm -hmm. is because you're a Catholic man. <laughs> yeah. The Catholics tend to favor poverty ball, I've noticed, around the world. I've heard this. Uh, yes, uh, but I'm glad. You know, I'm an American. You're an goals. American. So we answered yes, so we drink. Is we that correct? Well, you drink if you get it wrong or right or kind of whatever. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my kind of game. Wow. Okay, so now you, you read the prompt. All right. Um, the Michael Knowles Show is, at best, the third best show at The Daily Wire. Oh, wow. You know, I'm actually... I'm so I'm answering yours, yes. Yeah. Um, I'm just going <laughs> to... <laughs> you know, I mean, because I have, I have due humility. You're a humble human being. I'm a being. humble man. That's what I was thinking. As a Catholic, yes. you brought my last answer to my faith. I'm bringing yours to your faith. Yes. I think you're, Now, I think you're wrong. You think I got this wrong you about have, you? No, no, you're correct. I'm right about I think yes. you have the best show at the oh, Daily th Wire. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yes. You know, this was a gimme, though, because yeah. I was thinking, I was like, okay, third best. So now you're telling me that a devout Catholic mm -hmm. named a practicing Catholic, mm -hmm. I always prefer that term because I'm going to keep on practicing until yeah, I get it right. Well, and also, what does devout mean? What does it mean? That's not a technical term. Practicing Catholic actually means something. It's, it's like not a subjective Grounded in identity. reality, yes. Yeah. There are requirements you have to fulfill. It's like there's no way you've got... Clavin, mm -hmm. he's an Anglican. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. You got Ben. I, I'm beginning to think he's not a Catholic. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. He isn't. Yeah. So then it's just I'm competing against Walsh, mm -hmm. and uh, but that still puts me in the top three. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, only one of the other podcasters here submits to Rome, so mm -hmm. gotta pick you. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna take a drink. <laughs> like sure. Yeah. Okay. Why not? Yeah. It's ten in the morning. Ten in the morning. <laughs> yeah, that's the game. <laughs> okay. Comic book fans. Mm -hmm have a deep understanding of culture. Hmm. This is I'm answering for you? Yeah. Do we do it at the same time? Comic book fans have a... Well, you mean generally? I mean, I assume some of them mm -hmm. are, but Generally, okay. As a whole. Yeah. You, you were correct. Okay, correct that. that's how you feel. To be honest, I, I haven't really given that question much thought, so I don't have an answer, but I yeah. thought no would be an unpopular response, so that's yeah. the one I gave you. Yes. I'm trying yeah. to get you in trouble here. Because I guess comic book, I hate the comic book movies. Mm -hmm. I can't watch them, mm. with the exception of like Logan, which is not a comic book movie. Mm -hmm. It's a Western. What about The Dark Knight? Or The Dark Knight yeah, is another one, right? It's like not yes. really a comic yeah. book movie. I hate the movies. I guess in the pop culture, mm -hmm. The comic book fans are much more cultured than I am because I don't That's know fair. anything about it. Yeah. And they do. But generally, there there is more to life than like invincible people smashing buildings. Mm -hmm. There actually is more. Yes, you can. Here's the thing. Actually, my answer probably would be yes, so that my friend Eric July wouldn't come in here and smack there me. There you go. There you go. Yeah, so Let's move it down. you were wrong, which means I yes. have to drink. Yes, and I have and to you drink. have to drink. Yeah. All right. There we go. Hate this game. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. All right. This next one is mine. This is you. Okay. Cartoons are the lowest form of art. Um, so you have to answer for me. I have to answer for you. And of course, I know what your answer is, Noel. Yeah. I, I know. <laughs> I, know I guess answer. I would. I'm trying to figure out your humility here. Mm. You know, you might, but I'm going to say no. Here's the thing, Noel. Humility is knowing your place and taking it, yes. not necessarily denigrating what you do. Mm -hmm. 
And, it's not a humiliation. Exactly. Uh, and it's obvious. Look, I can't, I, I, I don't put cartoons on a very high level in terms of the hierarchy of art, but based on some of the liturgical art that I have mm -hmm. seen, like bad liturgical art, yes. um, abstract modernist art that's trying to pass itself off as Catholic is probably the lowest form of art. You know, compared to, first of all, cartoons can be very, very beautifully mm -hmm. artistic. I'm not saying that yours are. No, I'm just saying, not. you know, no, that they no. can be. Yes. <laughs> compared to other forms of art, let's say uh, slam poetry, mm -hmm. then the- Which is how we met. Yeah, we were giving a, a slam poem on how we're spiritual but not religious. Mm, we yeah. both had the exact same topic. I know. It was really great. It's like, why don't people get that? Why don't people understand that I'm unique and quirky? Yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the thing. It's like, why don't they understand I'm really interested in me? Maybe not in God, but you know, in me. <laughs> in I'm me. Really, I'm very fascinated. Yeah, you know? my, my favorite response to that is you have to be more specific because the devil's a spirit. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, owned. Yeah, mic drop. drop. I yeah. owned that person who isn't yeah. here, who was how, just sincere about their beliefs, and then got dumped on. Man, own, I, now I'm feeling bad. It's like how to own every freshman philosophy <laughs> major with facts and logic. And oh theology. man, I'm almost starting to feel bad. We should be more. We should be more kind. Charitable. And, okay, yeah, we should have yeah. a drink. Probably. But I should have a drink. Help. Yeah, that'll help me. Mm. Given the mass movement of voters from blue states to red states, traditionally Republican voting states will soon flip for Democrats. All at once? Yeah. You are right. Yeah. I think they will answer. soon flip to Democrats. Yeah. Was I wrong? Um, I'm not exactly. So this is another one where I, I wouldn't say that I'm on the fence here entirely. I lean towards yes, but I have some hope that there could be a significant backlash. No, so you're saying, okay. Yeah, okay. That's fair enough. Mm -hmm. Because here's my, f I, I don't think that the people moving to Tennessee with the Daily Wire are going to flip this state. No? Blue. No, I mean, they're all conservative, mostly conservatives. I would hope so. You would hope so. Just, you know, some were these people. Yeah, though. we're very open. We're that. just, if anyone's watching from the NLRB, we are not discriminating against people. On I don't know, like when I was politics. when I was in the waiting room, people were like walking up to me and whispering their left-wing opinions into my ear. Yeah, they yeah. were. They were like, like, don't tell Knowles. I poisoned Knowles' like, drink. Yeah, exactly. I was like, sweet. I'll make sure we, yeah. uh, I was like, I'll encourage him to drink regardless of what the answer is. Yes. So he yeah. takes that in. Here you are. You've walked right into my trap. But do you see the problem here is mm -hmm. even if all the conservatives move to these states. Frankly, Daily Wire is going to make Nashville more red than it was. There's just the fact of urbanization. Mm. As cities grow, things get more dim. Yeah. That's just what happens. Mm -hmm. I've said this. This is sort of a line I've taken about progressivism. It's basically just a label that we've given to social decay. And unless our country embraces Christ and starts living the natural law, even without embracing Christ in its supernatural sense, then we're going to continue to fall apart. Yeah. And so... It seems, from Wait. my perspective, we'll keep going to the left, and a lot of these red states will flip blue. But part of the reason I was hesitant to give myself a specific answer is because I'm wary of making predictions. Because any prediction I would have made five years ago would have turned out to be completely wrong. It's been an insane couple yeah. of years. True, but Seamus, are you, hold on. Are you telling me that what people do in their totally private personal oh, no. lives might have some effect on the public? Yes. Hold on. I know what? that's going to blow your mind. It's insane. Are I you know. saying we live in... in uh, like a country and a society? I think that when you live with people, sometimes things that people do affect you. What? Yeah. Isn't oh, that crazy? I'm going to have to think about yeah, that. Yeah, I know. I'm some, sorry. I, don't know if I, I hope uh, I haven't so shocked you too much. Is this mine? Is it this my turn to believe. Like degenerates who drink at 10 in the morning? <laughs> <Just> <laughs> everything really in their like private life? Them. Oh, we have to. Yeah, we it's need for the daily it. more virtue. We have to make you know? this video. Mm. This is horrible. Mm -hmm. Libertarians are the best hope for bringing liberals to a less radical, more conservative political belief system. Well... Let's answer this one. I was trying to think of the other side of the argument, but no, it's just, it's not. I was thinking of moving a TS just to embarrass you. Yeah. But yeah, no, there's absolutely no way. We have to be honest about what we believe. I don't like this idea that there's a more pragmatic approach and you want to bring people to something close to the truth or closer to the truth, but not quite there and just have them stay because that's the best they can handle. Again, I believe leftism is, is fundamentally just social decay embodied, but... We have to have respect for individual human beings and say, if I'm going to engage with you in dialogue to try to persuade you of something, clearly I have faith in the idea that you can recognize the truth. Yeah. So why would I only try to bring you halfway? That's right. stupid. Well, and, and, and not just halfway. Also, halfway is the wrong way of looking. Like, it's either true or it's not true. Yeah. So why would I try to lead you to untruth to make you a little bit less terrible than you are right now? And in, in some ways, by the way, the left 
has, I'm not saying they're more correct, they have better intuitions mm-hmm. than some of the, the lol-bertarian types. Mm-hmm. You know, I, yeah. I hesitate even to call them libertarian. Yeah. You know, the, this yeah. idea of just uh, do whatever you want mm-hmm. sexually mm-hmm. and bomb the Middle East. I mean, I think yeah. that is kind of what, what it comes down to, yeah. you know, abortion or birth control or whatever. The fact is the left, I think, understands something like free speech mm. better than the libertarians do. I think that can be the case. Part of my thing with, with libertarianism here is that I, it would be as obviously a significant pro- improvement from my perspective if a lot of these left-wing people became oh, yeah. libertarians. They wouldn't be as a power obsessed. They wouldn't be trying to silence us quite as often. And I know some libertarians who really are crazy consistent, and even though I don't agree with them anymore, I admire their consistency, and I, I think they have a good take on things every now and again. Just like the madman in the asylum who says he's Henry VIII. You say, I admire yeah. his consistency. Yeah. You know? Well, no, but there are also some libertarians who I think do a fantastic job speaking about the disaster that the United States' foreign policy has been over the past several yeah. decades. Like, they're fantastic on that. And over the past several years, the Republican Party has adopted the worst parts of libertarianism and basically none of the good stuff. So that they've adopted yeah. all of the That's social I mean. libertarianism. But... They don't critique American foreign policy the way they should. They don't really care that much about the Federal Reserve as a banking system or the fact that we're essentially a command economy and everything's been centralized. It's just, I'm fiscally conservative and socially liberal, which is this really maltose, not even quite libertarian position. Yeah, right. No, that's, it's actually why, I mean, I, I knock the libertarians a lot, but I'm, I'm not really knocking mm-hmm. Ron Paul. Yes, exactly. I, I will also criticize Ron Paul for specific reasons, but that's that's actually not the phenomenon that we're really talking mm-hmm. about here. Yeah, and it just doesn't it doesn't work. I think yeah. that the the left recognizes, the radical left even mm-hmm. recognizes that there is such a thing as like an aim of mm-hmm. society. They recognize that individuals have something to do with one another mm-hmm. when we are living in society. Mm-hmm. They recognize that not only is it legitimate to legislate morality, but you yeah, of necessarily legislate morality. Absolutely. All laws do that. And, and they, they recognize that all speech regimes have limits and standards and taboos, and they're basically trying to pervert it to their own ends. Mm-hmm. I can talk to that guy. It's, it's kind of like the, the ardent atheist, mm. right? I can kind of talk to the ardent atheist because he's thinking about religion. Yes. Instead yeah, of the exactly milk toast guy who's just like, eh, whatever. Yeah, or the person who was raised religious. You know, I went to 12 years of Catholic school. Oh, yeah. I'm, talking yeah. About, but I'm, I'm basically, I, yeah, I, yeah. I can, I'm the Pope now because I, yeah. I, I went to 12 years of Catholic school. Yeah, so there are a lot of people who have stepped out of their faith or don't take it very seriously, but don't really identify as atheistic or non religious, and it's more difficult to have a conversation with them because yeah. they haven't staked out a position. So I agree with you on that. All right. In a world where I am single, <laughs> this is about you. I, this I is assume. about you. So you're interpreting it f- to yourself. Okay. I'm answering for mm. you, answering for me. Yeah. That's what's happening here. What's well, like, right. yeah, what's the name of the guy on first base is what okay, I want to Okay, yes, know. yeah. Who? 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 That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. Who's on first? Uh-huh. Yes. Let's put these back to the middle. I <laughs> think you need a drink. I, I need a drink. <laughs> I need a drink to understand this question. I'm very confused. So, okay, I'm going to make this, I'm going to make this statement. And you're going to answer the way that you think that I would answer that okay. statement for me, yeah. and I will answer the way that I think you would answer that statement for you. Mm-hmm. In a world where I am single, if a female fan asked me out through a super chat or a mailbag question, I would consider the invitation. Would Knowles consider the invitation? Let me think about this. Hmm. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's a prudent thing. Yeah. I'm not saying we would end up together. Together. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying you're a guy. Mm-hmm. You're single. I am. You've Ladies, got, if you're watching, you actually you are super single. chat in. Uh, <laughs> you're there. It, it's just a descriptive statement. Mm-hmm. Of, you would have to consider the Yeah, of course. Of, of course. course. Yeah. Uh, I guess when I was struggling to answer the question, I was more thinking, is Knowles a long distance guy? But then again, mm. maybe the woman is in his town. So. Yeah, I know. I, I have been. I've, mm. d- I've, I've done long distance. I've I've done close distance. Mm -hmm. Now my wife and I are, we're even considering moving into the same house. That's fantastic. Good for you. That would be a really big, you should probably talk about that with the spiritual director first. You should. should. (laughs) Big step. It's like a huge step. All right. Here we go. Kamala Harris is worse than Joe Biden. Okay. Kamala Harris is worse than Joe Biden. I'm actually going to need to think for a second about my own answer. Why not? First of all, did I get it right? Yeah, I think so. It's complicated, but yes. Um, 
I, the reason I answered is the reason I would assume you would answer no to the question, which is basically that we have seen Joe Biden acting politically with a high degree of executive power. He was the vice president for years. And so we know what the failures of the Obama administration were. And we also know that Kamala Harris is a slimy character and has done some really awful things. But for every horrible thing she's done, Joe Biden has also done many horrible things. Yeah. Plus, he pretty much came close to destroying America uh, under the Obama administration. So he's, and, he's worse. And he's more effective. Mm -hmm. He's a more, you know, Kamala Harris. Would you say so? Yeah, because she's very unlikable. Mm -hmm. She was. You don't like her, her laugh? She, like what? Her <laughs> it doesn't, yeah. You don't hear that? You know, like, oh, I think if, she, if she wants to win in her own right, she needs to ditch the cauldron and the broomstick, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's really not yeah. attractive. She was one of, if not the first person out in the 2016 Democrat primaries. That's People, fair. They That's don't fair. like That's her. Right? Good point. But old Uncle Joe, who wakes up in the morning, licks his finger, puts it in the wind and says, oh, which way is politics blowing today? Okay, I'll agree with that. Mm -hmm. He is a snake, that guy. Yeah. I mean, he, and, and it's even particularly insidious for a couple mackerel snapping papists, mm -hmm. such as yeah, you exactly. and Yeah, exactly, for you and E. Because he, it, right. he's really so scandalous in the way that he's, uh, transforming people's understanding of Catholicism. Well, I've heard he's devout, though. He's devout. Yeah, I've heard him described as devout. devout. Maybe not it's practicing, like, but devout. Well, it's funny because we were touching on this earlier. In order to be a practicing Catholic, there are a certain set of standards you actually have to meet. So you have to um, fulfill the six precepts of the church. You have to get full assent to Catholic teaching. You have to abide by the Ten Commandments and attempt, attempt to repair your life when you violate one of them. Joe Biden very explicitly does not give full assent to Catholic teaching. And yet he's described as a, a practicing Catholic and he's referred to as one by left-wing media as if they're not contradicting the facts because they actually think it's just a subjective label label of identity. No, but Seamus, yeah. they went to 12 years of Catholic school. They went to the 12 years of Catholic school, exactly. <laughs> they know, they're, they know yeah. it. they're basically the yeah. prefect for the congregation. Of the yeah, doctor. exactly. What, what am I thinking? Due to the current state of policing in America, Abolishing the police is a discussion that should be had. I'm trying to think if there's like a trick to this question. Yeah. Mm. Like, I, know. I know that you like, really want to abolish it. Yeah, I do. Things. Yeah, I yes, I guess it's a yes. I'm, do you know do you know why this is a confusing question? I know exactly why. It's a confusing question for me as well. Um, part of the reason is because the police are sort of equally enforcing the law, but then as it happens, conservatives are selectively prosecuted after the police arrest them. So they're not really helping the people who have been standing up for them. Yeah. They're the, they are, for them. the police are because of bad DAs, many of whom were installed by radical leftists. Yes. I know you're not allowed to call out people like George Soros. Who? It's a, it's a heinous. I don't know that name. It's, he's, uh, I, I've never you know, heard that name so before. Who? What are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> they are in many ways the enforcement wing of the liberal establishment. Yeah, yeah. And so, so did we get it right? I mean, like I would still, I still come down on the side of you, th the left is using abolish the police. Mm -hmm. Like I think I would still say no in the sense that the left is, is infiltrating the police mm -hmm. just like they're infiltrating the yes. intelligence community and the, and the military yes. with all these woke commercials. Exactly. Say, we want to hollow it out from within so we take over all the institutions. Would you, did well, I get it right thing. or no? And, and I'm not actually sure that they want to hollow out the police force. I just think they want to use the police force for their own goals because all they yes. care about is power. They don't have actual principles. So when you look at how militarized the police have come over the past several decades and the fact that the Department of Education and the Department of Fish and Wildlife have SWAT teams. Yeah, yeah. Think like, I don't think that anyone on the left would really, in the long run, walk any of those back if they could use it to advance their own agenda. Yeah, yeah that's and right. And so... I'm not, I'm not even entirely convinced that they wanted to fund the police. No, no. They, they want a robust police force mm -hmm. made up of people who agree with them or who are cowered into, mm -hmm. into a, going along with their agenda. Absolutely. And are capable of doing social work, ideally. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Social workers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Social workers. Okay. So I, think, I think we're both going to have to drink on that one. No, I think we are. I, I don't even know who was right and wrong, but we certainly have to drink. We both have to drink. Mm -hmm. it's, I remember these rules. Mm -hmm. I watched the episode with Walsh. This yeah. is what happened. All right. I think you're up. <clears throat> Doodling a three-dimensional cube is more impressive than writing a blank book. I'm answering for you, and you're answering for me. Doodling a three-dimensional cube is more impressive than writing a blank book. You flatter yourself. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, you're actually correct. I thank you. Yes, thank you're you. Correct. You're a man of discernment and of taste. Of course. Yeah, exactly. Well, and part of the reason I have sympathy for this. When I'm making cartoons, 
it's much easier to animate something short, but you don't get ideas for short cartoons quite as often. It's actually mm. more difficult to write something really short. So it stands to reason that it's extremely difficult wow. to write the shortest possible thing, which is nothing. No, in all honesty, it's a really funny idea to write this book where you say reasons to vote for Democrats. And, Stop there's, it. Go on. and there's nothing in it. I know. Um, so that's a funny idea that came to you. And that's not as straightforward or entertaining an idea as just drawing a cube. So I actually think it requires more creative intelligence. Thank you very you're much. It, it, you're, you're totally right on this, yeah, too, though. I mean, we all know brevity is the soul of wit. Yes. But so it, then stop. Let's just stop talking. This, this, you know, but I want to explain. Like playing, I'm you know, I mean, look, <laughs> you're, a, you're a comedian, right? Cartoonist, you're a yes, cartoonist and a comedy yeah, writer. Comedy writer, So yeah. you know that the funniest thing is to explain a joke. Yes, it's There's hilarious nothing when you do that. Funny. Yeah, exactly. It's like an I improv. I try to do it as often as I possibly can. When you improvise, you always want to say no, but. No, but. No, but. Maybe. Oh, and then explain yeah. why the thing the last guy said was funny. Yeah. <laughs> that's usually yes, works that's really well. Want. Now, I am up. Okay. Okay, brother. A Guinness to an Irishman is the. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even want to hear this yeah. put it sound right now. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is a microaggression. It's a macroaggression. Mm. A Guinness to an Irishman is the equivalent of a pumpkin spice latte to a white girl. Without, without question. Yeah. I mean, do you know what? You know, by, you want, I, I think that's kind of a degrading way of putting it. Do you know the only the only difference is a Guinness is less caloric. Yeah, that's awesome. Everyone that's thinks true. a Guinness is a very caloric drink. It's not. It's it's got the same calories as like a Bud Light. No, there there, there is a difference. What's the difference? I don't drink my pumpkin spice lattes at 10 a.m. Michael. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a very good point. All right, here we go. The host of the Michael Knowles Show does a better impression of Dr. Fauci than Tim Pool. I'm answering for you. Yeah, I actually, I don't know that I've heard Tim's impression. Are you kidding me? I, did you not see my, I did a cartoon where Tim voices Fauci. Oh, t oh really? H had you seen, so here's the thing. You said you haven't seen it, so maybe I'm going here, but had yeah, you seen yeah, it, you would absolutely be, like, be here. Yeah. I'm sorry. No so, offense to your Fauci impression. You think but, Tim does a better Fauci than yeah, me? Yeah, he does, he does. The droplets, Andrew! The droplets are going to get all over your grandmother! When I do my Fauci, mm -hmm. My Dr. Fauci yes. has a sort of, he goes up and down like this, you sheep. Yes. When, when I'm doing Dr. Fauci, I'm actually doing an impression of a Jewish woman that I know from <laughs> Queens. Seriously, I am. And, but it sounds to me there's a similar kind of mm -hmm. joke about it. What does Tim get that I don't get? Oh, man. Where do I begin? Yeah, I know. I, know. I mean, there's, we could be here for hours. Well... When I was recording with him, I'll, I'll be honest, in, in part, maybe it's difficult for me to discern because I have never been in studio with you while you have recorded no, Dr. No, Fauci no. for yes. a cartoon about Dr. Fauci. True. But Tim knocked it out of the park, man. Right. And we have behind the scenes footage uploaded to my Patreon if people want to support it, patreon.com slash freedom tunes, little plug. But he crushed it. And people listening had no idea it was Tim. They're like, oh, wow, Tim did that Dr. Fauci? He, he, he crushed it. He's actually really good All at right. voice acting. I'm, gonna... I'm sorry, Knowles. And I thought you knew that because I thought you watched my I videos, know, yeah, but no, evidently I guess not. So I am, I am... You just invite me over for drinks at 10 in the morning and, all... and don't watch my cartoons. That's okay. That's I'm, I'm going to see Tim tonight. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to battle. Have a Fauci off. Fauci. On his show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it'll be. It's like everyone loses in that yeah. game, I think. Yeah. Okay, I'm up. I've seen Tim Pool without a beanie. We're answering for the other person. Has Noel seen Tim Pool without a bean? I'm actually going to say, I mean, you're, you know, you're tighter with the guy than I am. But I still, he's pretty protective with the beanie thing. Mm -hmm. He wears that beanie all the time. Yeah. What, was I right or was We're I? We're pretty good friends. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. I've seen him without the beanie. Does he have, is there like a second head under there? What I, is? I, am, I cannot confirm or deny that there is a second head <laughs> under Tim Pool's hat. I'll, I'll maybe I'll try later on tonight. I'll try. It's swipe just it it's off. a gigantic exposed brain. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like that cartoon. It's just a <laughs> exactly. meme. You know? Okay, just I'll like take a drink because I got it take wrong. A little sip. Yeah. Once the left's boogeyman of white supremacy exhausts itself, the church will become the left's primary focus of blame and animosity. Yeah, I mean, it, it already is. Yeah, exactly. That's well. That's why I answered no because it already is. Oh, okay. That's yeah. fair. Okay, that's yeah. fair enough. Yeah, yeah. It, it all. I mean, the the, the church by which mm -hmm. by which I mean the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. Of course, it is always the object of the left's always utmost animosity. Always, I mean, this is I, I talk about this quite a lot when people try to say that Catholics can support leftism or agree with it, or that they're somehow fellow travelers on issues of helping the poor. The left came to exist during the French Revolution. This is where we get yeah. the term, and their entire purpose was to counter the Catholic Church and its interests. Was to was to 
chop off the heads yes. of priests. Yes. And it's not, a, it's not as if they started being nice to Catholics in the 20th century. Yeah. I mean, leftism has always been aggressively anti-Logos. It's also worth pointing out. Because they hate God. Because they, yeah, right. They Ultimately. hate God and, and, and they hate those of us made in the image of God, mm-hmm. namely people. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> They're entirely misanthropic. Yes, but we have to remember, you think of Pope Leo XIII, mm. when we hear the Catholic Church is actually very pro-socialism. No. Leo, Leo the Thirteenth. he said, socialists are a pest, mm-hmm. a plague, a wicked confederacy that seeks to steal the very gospel itself. You heard the same thing from Blessed Pius the Ninth, Pi- Saint Pius mm-hmm. the Tenth, Pius the Eleventh, Pius the Twelfth, even John the Twenty, Saint John the Twenty Third, yes. yeah. who was actually sort of a liberal pope. He was a church liberal, for he sure. He was a church yeah. liberal. He said no Catholic could subscribe even to a moderate form of socialism. Mm-hmm. Yes, and this is this is something I was talking about. I did Matt Frad's show yesterday, and we got a super chat. Would you rather live in an economically left-wing society, but with cultural conservatism where people are virtuous, or a liberal open economy where people are completely degenerate? And my answer was, I just have to reject the framing. Obviously, I'd yeah. rather live in a virtuous yeah. society, but the headship of the father in the household is almost entirely contingent upon property rights. It just doesn't happen in your society. The father has to provide for the family. He has to be free to do so. Yeah. And right. If he isn't, if the government is providing for the family for him, it undermines the entire no, structure. So I, you cannot have a socially conservative. And that is most embodied when you have a complete command economy where workers yeah. own the means of production. Then dad has no property to provide with the family for. It's up to somebody else's whim. Some bureaucrat thousands of miles away is making the decisions for the family rather than the father. Yeah. How to allocate resources. Uh, but... Even though we know that as Catholics, we cannot embrace a full-on total uh, seizure of the means of production because it's beneath the dignity of man to not own property. It's not as if once you're not at that position, things are great for families. It's just the closer you get to it, the worse everything is. Yeah, I'm so glad you're, because there are some people today, I think, who are reacting against this kind of insane, Mm -hmm. very, what would you call it, neoconservative or libertarian or something, idea that of, of the radical individual autonomy that we're all yes. free-floating atoms. And they're, they're reacting against that, and they're saying, socialism, sign me up. Mm-hmm. That ain't it, Chief. That ain't it either, actually. And it's for precisely the reason you've described. The, the relationship between these economic matters and our social, cultural matters of virtue, mm-hmm. you can't just separate them. You can't just compartmentalize them. They kind of all speak to the same thing. Yeah, so, no. So, so what is the answer? Is the answer the D word? distributism? Oh, no. I See, I, I'm still a market guy. Yes. I'm still I mean, a market guy entirely. I don't know. I mean, I'm open-minded. I'd like to learn more about distributivism. Uh, a lot of people who I respect buy into it, so I'm sure even if I don't end up agreeing with it, there's got to be some merit there, something to take away, but I am a free market guy. Because for, I mean, for, for, like, for those for those who aren't the macro... And, yeah. yeah, those who are not like the crazy sort of totally in the weeds Catholics out there, mm-hmm. distributism is this economic idea that was advanced really in the early 20th century mm-hmm. by, it was thought to come from Catholic social teaching and it's, it's a little hard to pin down exactly, you know, what it, what it is, but it would be a sort of alternative mm-hmm. to what we would call capitalism or to uh, socialism. But you're saying, no, give me some markets. Yeah. So I believe in the market economy and I understand that there can be a time and place for regulation. So F.A. Hayek put the Austrian school on the map and he believed in antitrust laws. Uh, I believe the Austrian School of Economics provides a beautiful descriptive model of how economies work, even though I don't, even though I don't necessarily agree with all of the prescriptive claims. I'm not completely libertarian on economic issues. Of course, sometimes there's a role for the government to step in. But I would say that if you look at an economy, even if, if as a Catholic you're looking at the economy and saying X, Y, and Z about capitalism absolutely has to be regulated as a matter of faith, if you can pick out some specific non-negotiables from Catholic teaching with respect to what economic regulation should be, it doesn't get you to this, this hardline distributivist position. You can just have a sort of modified capitalism at worst if you do have to change the system all that much. Plus, we have Pope St. John Paul the Great who says yes. in Centesimus Annus that free markets mm-hmm. are the most efficient way to Mm -hmm. allocate resources in an economy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Coming back from uh, Ray Room Navarro. Yeah, yes. Have we, is the entire audience Catholic by this point? They better be. If they haven't converted now, if they haven't converted (laughs) seeing us drink at 10 in the morning. I know, we're being good examples of virtue. Mm -hmm. First of all, please don't drink at 10 in the morning at home if you don't have a reason to. Yeah. And don't do it on five hours of sleep. I'm on five hours of sleep here. In oh, you got five like hours? Are you about? bragging? Are you oh bragging by how much sleep you got? Is this, is, are we doing the college thing where we brag about how yeah, much sleep? Um, we don't actually, have to one-up each other. Yeah. I got three hours. All right, Knowles. 
<laughs> oh, okay. This is actually an important, an important question. In America, the Italians have historically been more persecuted than the Irish. It's not even close. It's, it's not even. Wow, I, I agree. That's 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 big of you. Oh wait, no, no. Yeah. Oh yeah. You believe the Italians were more persecuted? There's no question. Largest mass lynching in American history. Was it of the Irish? Here's the thing, though. There are, there are a lot of parts of Irish history that we don't discuss because it's not considered politically correct because only certain groups are allowed to have victim status. Mm -hmm. So when you look at indentured service, mm -hmm. the fact that most indentured Here servants we were Irish, mm -hmm. they were often treated worse than slaves because you had to buy a new slave if they died. If an indentured servant died, you just didn't have to pay him. You're good, yep. That's, no, that's, that's a fair point. I actually, I don't look at, I have a quarter Irish to me. Mm. I don't. I a little more yeah. the swarthy side. Yeah. The Italians, because when they came, I'm glad there's you know, something good in this cocktail, <laughs> in, this, in this human cocktail. Mm -hmm. when, something that works. When the Italians came here, mm -hmm. there was some question in parts of the country: Are they white or are they black? Mm -hmm. One simply does not. You know, same my, with the Irish. Same with yeah. not exactly white, white or black, but Irish were the Irish were not considered white. Yeah, they were. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, I, I remember once I was talking to my English grandfather and my Irish grandmother. Mm -hmm. And they were, my grandfather was very into ancestry and genealogy. Mm -hmm. And he discovered there were actually some Irish in his line too. Thank goodness. That some, the, some the Knowleses went over to Ireland. And my grandmother said, see, I told you, I knew there were some Irish there. And, and my grandfather, I believe the line was, someone had to tame the savages. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, English well, attitude. first of all, he's absolutely wrong, but now I understand where you get your brains. Um, <laughs> I don't believe you're up. Yes. It's just good you have some Irish DNA in yeah, there. There's something. My life has been shaped by the immense amount of Catholic guilt I feel on a daily basis. Clearly. Yeah, You'd be a much no, better person, Michael. Me? I'm just, I'm <laughs> no. worn down on. The thing about shame, mm. just a plug for shame at the moment, because, you know, shame is very unpopular now. You know, mm, you can yeah. fat shame or slut shame or. Shame, shame, uh, yeah. shame, yeah. shame is shame. Shame is all the shame. time. <laughs> Every yeah. day, Life this is guy rots constantly. The thing about shame is, mm -hmm. it's usually right. <laughs> usually, it's it's kind of on to something. Yeah. You know, it's called your moral conscience. Yep. You don't want to hate yourself. You want to have an appropriate love of yourself. And you know, you can't love your neighbor. You're made in God's image and likeness. There's You're something worthy of love there. So there's something yeah. worthy of love. You ought to know, like when you do something wrong, you should, you'll know that and you should just, uh, instead of embracing it and being like really happy about it and like dancing around mm -hmm. for it, you should maybe repent mm -hmm. of that and feel kind of bad. The, what was the line? I think it was from Niebuhr who said that today religion is a God without wrath leading mm -hmm. a people without sin into a kingdom without judgment mm -hmm. through the ministrations of a Christ without a cross. Oh, man. That is beautiful, and it's true. I'll say this. I would define shame and guilt differently, though I agree with you that as a social mechanism, shame is absolutely indispensable. Yeah. So shame is when your primary concern is what other people think of mm. you. So guilt is actually better. Yeah, because yeah. because guilt is your own conscience bothering you, you coming to terms with that, and ideally rectifying your life. Yeah. Shame's a little bit different, but... Of course, guilt has gotten this really bad rep. Yeah. There's this idea of Catholic guilt and how horrible is it? First of all, there are some things you should feel guilty about. Would you rather have a person, would you rather have to deal with a person who feels too guilty or not guilty enough? Like, right. It's an, it's an easy course, question yeah. to answer. You have to moderate too. I'm not saying the yeah. answer is to feel too guilty, but what our culture considers too guilty is, is unbelievable. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> you're feeling bad about anything you do ever, no matter how horrible it was. It's like you're being too hard on yourself. Hey, come on. Yeah. You deserve it. Yeah. Yes. Whatever. Yes. You, hey, you it's like, I deserve to burn in hell forever, <laughs> and I accept Jesus Christ so that won't happen. Seriously. Yes. Like, we I just, know. We've I know. all sinned. We've yes. all sinned, and we deserve to go yeah. to hell. And like, here, God has given me an incredible life. So the answer isn't necessarily shame. It's, it's gratitude. Yeah. But... And, and we should the, feel guilt when we've done wrong. I'm glad you're making this sort of public distinction here with shame versus mm -hmm. guilt, because... The, the thing about shame is mm -hmm. all cultures shame. Mm -hmm. It's like just how all cultures have standards yeah, exactly. and taboos. All cultures will shame. The question is, what are you being shamed for? Bingo. Like, we, sh we should be shamed for drinking for at, drinking 10, in at 10 in the morning. But what we, we, would, be, we would be celebrated for that. We would be shamed for 
I don't know, like diligently doing our work if we were to ever do like that. Like pray, if either better. of us ever could do that. Yeah. I mean, like, but no, it's doing something very solid and worthwhile, praying outside of an abortion clinic, trying to convince yes, women to choose shamed. life. Yeah. You would be shamed for that, absolutely. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then, so they understand it's a social mechanism. They just don't want it directed towards behaviors that they consider to be positive or more cynically behaviors which they know are going to destroy society so they can reconstruct something new. Yeah. All right. All right. Enough shame. Enough shame. Okay, so this, listen to the entire prompt before right. you react in any way. Excuse me? You, am I accused of being emotional? This is very, <laughs> this is important. We could, this could end the whole thing. Okay, all right. Well. <clears throat> Some people with information that could lead to the arrest, the arrest of Hillary Clinton were most Maybe likely so. indirectly or directly killed by Hillary Clinton. Due to YouTube rules, you have to make your guess, but do not verbally confirm. If the other person guessed correctly, give only an ambiguous, non-verbal confirmation. So I'll read that prompt again. <laughs> Some people with information that could lead to the arrest of Hillary Clinton were most likely, indirectly or directly, <laughs> killed by Hillary Clinton wearing a mustache at the Manhattan Correctional Facility. Now, I would never say anything that could get anyone demonetized. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> how do we say this without saying it? I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. I just, I just, and then I'm the guard. I'm the <laughs> cell guard. <laughs> I think we answered the question. Yeah, I think, I think we deserve a drink for that yeah, one. I think we Cheers. certainly <laughs> do. Yeah. Pour one out, man. Pour one out for that guy. Oh. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think I'll just drink that. I think I'll, yeah. I think I'll save it for myself. A little <laughs> more wasted on it. Yeah. Ben Shapiro is the only host at the Daily Wire who deserves to have a Freedom Tune sketch. Hmm. Well, I mean, the answer for you is uh, apparently just descriptive. Oh. Okay. I just am saying. Somebody a little I've salty looked, here. No, is I don't know. A I've bit looked salty. at. Knowles, you voiced characters. I put That's you in true. cartoons. I, I literally put right. you in a cartoon yeah. about the question we just answered. You were in a cartoon about the That's gentleman true. who we right. were just discussing. You're right. Oh, that global sex trafficker who committed suicide before he could tell us which of the most powerful humans on the planet were pedophiles? If you ask me, the whole thing is pretty suspicious. If you're some kind of crazy conspiracy theorist, that is. <sighs> but I guess I guess it wasn't about you. Oh, I'm sorry, Michael. Yeah, that it, wasn't, good it was enough? really what? Was, just... was spending hours of my time <laughs> animating your face not enough for you? Did it have to be all about you, Knowles? Unbelievable. Take a drink. I'll take a drink. You're being shamed. I, I should. I should be shamed. Yep. This, is, this is the last one. Is this the last question? This is, this is my question. Okay. Well. No, no, it's not. This is the second last one. Oh, beautiful. Mm. Mm. Okay, well, I actually, I guess I have the answer for you on this. Drawing cartoons is a great way to meet single Catholic women. <laughs> Someone after. I, I, I thought you were smarter than that, Knowles. I thought you're you're still single. I am. Yeah, I am. You're right. <laughs> Depends I guess you on got the day of the week. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Look, Knowles. All right. Right now, currently, I am single. That is correct. <laughs> Incidentally, I am single. But making cartoons on the internet. You know, it's it's a, yeah. it's a great way for you know, Catholic girls to know who you are. Yeah, and you and know, then what? Who does look at it? Who does every girl want to date? An animator, man. It's a whole obviously, thing. Obviously. Ask any girl, who's your dream guy? Yeah. Walt Disney. No, I know. You ask. Ten out of ten times. Even when girls are in, you know, they're in elementary school and they're saying, you know, your what do you, who do you want to be with? Who do you, who want, do you want to be I with? I want to be with Bro. an animator. I can't tell you how jealous the football stars they, were. They always were, yeah. When you were just giving them swirlies, you were like, yeah, yeah take that, it's, Chad. It doesn't even know whatever. how to do a motion tween, bro. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Well, that's, you know, another great way to meet single Catholic women. Hmm. Show up on the Michael Knowles show. YouTube oh, channel, you know? yeah. Ladies. You're going to make me blush, Knowles. Mm -hmm. You're making me blush right now. <laughs> because you're Irish. You've got that exactly. fair skin. Exactly. It's, got, it's true. I'm not going to be insulted. Nope. Reasons to vote for Democrats, a comprehensive guide, is more informative than speechless controlling words and controlling minds. I'm answering for you. I suppose so. Um, hmm. I'm going to say no, too. It may be more profound. Mm -hmm. It may be pithier. Mm -hmm. It may contain more wisdom. Mm -hmm. Of course. 
But there's just more stuff in the other book. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's literally more just more information. Yeah. I, I've said it once and I, I've said it again. I don't, I don't think you have to, to read the book, but Knowles would appreciate it if you bought it. Yes, that's the main thing. Enough. I really don't. I said <laughs> as this, long as you buy it. I said this to a friend of mine. A friend of mine had bought multiple copies, actually, mm -hmm. for, you know, for relatives and things. Mm -hmm. I said, but, you know, I just haven't had time to read it. I said, what? You're like, in fact, you don't have to have to read every copy. I don't, you don't yeah. even have to read one of the copies. Just, <laughs> it just doesn't, you gave me the money. done the thing. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I really, it's not even the money. Because I, you know, the way, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. the way, no, sure, the, the way, ah, not, this money has nothing to do with it. The way publishing works, you get an advance and then the publishers always just like make up a bunch of accounting mm -hmm. and then you never get any money afterward. Mm -hmm. But maybe you get like a little touch, a little, a little, a little taste, you know. Uh -huh. But you know what I really want? I actually, seriously, more than the money, I, I want people to think you're cool when they read this book. I want them to think I'm a cool guy. And I want the New York Times editors. Oh. I want them to sit down at their little meeting. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, what they what they usually meet for. They talk about, you know, how Trump is leading an insurrection. Mm -hmm. They talk about this. And I want them in the midst of this to say, Michael Knowles' book about us libs <laughs> has to be on the list. That's what I want. Yeah. That's all I want. That's pretty good. Out of this. And that's so he wants to make the New York Times bestseller list has nothing to do with wanting money. No, I, I never. I just want to assure everyone no, at home, me, nothing no. to do. No he money. Doesn't, he doesn't even like money. No, money is the root of paid. all. Actually, money is not the root of all evil. Love of money. The is love the of money of is the root evil. of all evil. We should not be attached to anything but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right. And to that, I will drink. Chin Cheers, chin. brother. <laughs> Weren't we finishing? I thought we were finishing. I thought that was the thing. We finished the game. All right. Well, now I'm just embarrassed. Now I just look like a hoodlum. <laughs> Absolute degenerate. It's 10 in the morning, Michael. What are we doing? <laughs>